tropical island in the Indian Ocean. Over the last two days we've seen some of the work done by the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust. Our adventure continues. Day two. This is more how I imagined Mauritius would be. Blue sky and sunshine. These are the Averys and the birds here are very different to the ones we've seen at camp. I'd like to introduce you to Bunter. This is Bunter. Hello. And we're at the Averys, which is very different to camp because in camp, the birds are not encouraged to be friendly to humans. And as you can see here, that's not the case. By doing this, they can really kind of learn about the birds' behaviours. Hello. And how they interact together. Each of the birds have, has a name, like Bunter here, who seems to want to eat my finger. and. Um, they also know each other because they're a very tight-knit group of birds, aren't you? Yes. Keeping animals in captivity gives you information which is impossible to collect in the wild because you're in such intimate contact with them. But of course you have to use the birds in the wild to teach you about what their real requirements are. We had to study the wild birds to understand what the social system was and what types of food they ate. So you actually need both and a well-balanced project will actually have a captive component and a wild component as well. And in the late 1980s, there were only eight known birds left in the world, of which there were only two females. And it seemed that they were going to become extinct. And we really didn't know why they were so rare, and we really didn't know how to save them. But after many years of fiddling around, studying them, trying to understand them, we now know how to conserve the species and we're now breeding large numbers which we're releasing back into the wild. But as Gerald Durrell knew all too well, it's impossible to turn back the clock and recreate the island as it was in the time of the dodo. So to see real Mauritius, we actually have to leave the island. Just a 10 minute boat journey away from Mauritius and here we are on Egret Island. Now the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation are recreating Gerald Durrell's dream on this very island and I have to say it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Egret Island is where Gerald Durrell's dream is really coming to life. Here we can see maybe a little glimpse of what the dodo saw all those years ago. Because Mauritius is such a big island we can't hope to restore it all and get rid of all the things that are not meant to be there. So on this island we want to try and turn it back to its pristine form what it looked like when the first people landed here. So we've been able to get rid of rats that, that came uh, on the boats and cats. And we've also taken out all the weeds. And we've been planting back the native forest. And now that we've got the vegetation, more or less as we want it, we're starting to put back the animals that we think belong here. The project on Ilo's Egret, fantastic effort to try to recreate a bit of the old Mauritius. And you know, our people out there, our team and people who studied with us, you know, they're, they're doing it all. Looking around the island really gives you a sense of how Mauritius would have looked through the eyes of the dodo. Here the species are truly wild, but numbers and health still have to be checked. Ruth Cole is in charge of the pink pigeons here on Ile Zogret. When there's a new arrival, she has to check it out. But as you can see, that's not as easy as it sounds. Okay. <laughs> Covered in twigs and very much sweaty later. Yep, see he's just starting to perch on my hands. He's able to balance just slightly. Um, he's a bit shaky still. But this one will probably fledge in about five to seven days which is nice, and I'll come back and check the nest every day until he fledges. And then we just watch for him at the hoppers, and when he comes in after that, we can identify him because he has a blue ring on his leg. This is the way, this is how old window. You can't fly yet. You can't. Trust me. Trust me. You're not old enough to fly. Come back. So I think the male takes care of a lot of them in these this period. The female on this nest has already paired up with her old mate. 
This is the best way to climb. Okay. Because if I if I fall, I just support myself. Then I don't squash the squat. <laughs> and it's all good. As the baby returns to its nest and we make our way back to mainland Mauritius, I'm left with these final thoughts. These last few days, I've seen how one man's dream has saved an entire ecosystem. Plants, pigeons, parrots and more. The scale of the project is huge. But to think that all that started with a zoo on the other side of the world. It's a trip I will never forget. And I'm so glad I could share it with you.